Have you ever scrolled online through countless supplements, overwhelmed by the sheer number of options and wondering if it really matters which one you choose? What's up and welcome to the video. I'm Dr. Daniel Ricciardi, gut health expert, licensed pharmacist, fitness enthusiast, and creator of SIBO Shortcut. My brand new recipe ebook titled Digest Better was also just released this past week. It contains 18 of my favorite meals and desserts designed to be easy to digest and support gut health. There's a link below to check it out. In this video today, we're going to discuss which types and forms of supplements are likely better than others. This video is a follow-up to last week's video, 10 common nutrient deficiencies and their symptoms. In this video, I'll discuss the differences between the different salt forms of certain vitamins and nutrients. When I say salt forms, I mean the difference between vitamin 6 pyridoxine versus vitamin 6 P5P and why I prefer some of these over others. And as a licensed pharmacist for over a decade, I find that choosing a suboptimal salt form of a vitamin or nutrient to be the biggest miss when it comes to people picking supplements. And this is something that a lot of pharmacists are also just not even aware of. I'll include a link to my full script online dispensary with all of these preferred options and everything you'll get is 20% off. Then stick around till the very end because I'll give a couple more things to consider when it comes to picking a supplement that's best for you. And I'll also share which types of supplements I personally take. Real quick, as a disclaimer, this video is for informational purposes only. The suggestions and information in this video may not be safe or appropriate for everyone to follow. All right, and let's get started with the different salt forms of these different vitamins and nutrients. Number one, we have magnesium. If your main issue is constipation, using a form of magnesium such as citrate or oxide may be good options for you to do. If you're looking for a magnesium for sleep, anxiety, or other mental health situations, magnesium threonate is likely a very good option. And then if you just want a magnesium supplement for general use or are taking it for muscle aches, magnesium glycinate is a good option. Next up, we'll talk about zinc. This 2023 study from Nutrients Journal compared the different types of zinc in terms of bioaccessibility. This basically means how easy it is for your body to actually use the zinc for its body processes. It found that zinc diglycinate and zinc gluconate were the two most bioavailable forms with bioaccessibility up to 9.4 and 6.2% respectively. Zinc methionine, picolate, citrate, and sulfate had lower bioaccessibilities, which ranged from 1 to 3.5%. Next vitamin up we have is vitamin D. This 2024 meta-analysis from Advances in Nutrition Journal looked at comparing vitamin D2 to vitamin D3 and how it affected total vitamin D concentration. It found that based on 20 comparative studies showed that vitamin D3 was superior to vitamin D2 in raising total vitamin D concentrations. Nutrient number four we have is is vitamin B12. This 2017 article by the Journal of Integrative Medicine compared various forms of vitamin B12 to see which kinds were more bioavailable and easier for your body to utilize. Found that supplementing with any of the nature bioidentical forms of B12, so this includes methylcobalamin, hydroxocobalamin, or adenosylcobalamin, was preferred instead of the use of cyanocobalamin owing to their superior bioavailability and safety. Cyanocobalamin is the most common type of B12 that you'll see in both oral forms and injectable form, and it just seems not to be as good according to this study. Nutrient number five, vitamin B6. The two main forms are P5P, which is the active form of vitamin B6, and then pyridoxine, which needs to be actually converted to P5P for your body to use. As you may suspect, P5P is far superior. There's a ton of studies on this. It's not really up for debate. Having too much pyridoxine in your system can also cause toxicity, which obviously we don't want. So for these reasons, if you're looking at a supplement, P5P is going to be your best option. Supplement number six are iron supplements. This one's a little bit tricky to talk about because bioavailability is important, but for many people taking iron supplements, it's actually the side effects such as gastrointestinal related side effects, such as stomach aches, constipation, where people actually aren't able to tolerate them in order to continue getting any benefit from them. So we can make a little bit of an argument that ferrous gluconate can get absorbed better than ferrous sulfate, especially if you're taking vitamin C with these iron supplements. However, I wouldn't normally do this, but in this case, I would say choose the option where you have the fewest side effects that you're able to tolerate. Number seven, we have calcium. This 1999 meta-analysis looks at calcium bioavailability, comparing calcium citrate with calcium carbonate. And it found that calcium citrate is absorbed a little bit better than calcium carbonate, roughly 22 to 27% better. Lastly, number eight, multivitamins. When choosing a multivitamin, basically you're going to want to find one that has active form of a lot of these different nutrients 
ingredients. I definitely didn't discuss all of them in this video. One that I personally like is Thorn Basic Nutrients to a Day because compared to a lot of other multivitamins, it has more active forms of nutrients such as the ones we discussed earlier in this video. Moving on, a couple other considerations to make when choosing a supplement that's best for you. It's probably easier if I give you a quick example here. In this photo here, we have a calcium supplement or it's basically a chocolate bar disguised as a calcium supplement. Looking at the ingredients, we have corn syrup, corn syrup solids, caramel color, natural flavors, artificial flavors. So all of these are heavily processed ingredients in most cases. And then they also have vitamin K1 in it, which isn't even the proper type of vitamin K to help absorb calcium. It's actually vitamin K2. What I'm saying is the ingredients listed on the back of the bottle are more important than the ingredients listed on the front. Everyone's body's different. And if you have a lot of different inactive ingredients, you may be consistently taking something that doesn't agree with your body on a daily basis. And this can make it really difficult to figure out as for most people, a basic nutritional supplement isn't going to be something you're going to think is causing all your digestive symptoms. This is why whether it's a food or a supplement, I'm a huge proponent on consuming as few additives as possible. What I personally like to do supplement wise, I typically prefer dry supplements for a few reasons. Easier to store, usually last longer before expiring, and usually easier to travel with. If a supplement is available in pure 100% powder form with no added ingredients, I'll usually go with that. An example is creatine monohydrate. I just have a tub of powder and I do this instead of taking capsules. If the supplement's not available in a pure powder form, I'll usually go to capsules next. Capsules typically have fewer binders and added ingredients compared to tablets. And then finally, if capsules are not available, tablets would be my next option. As a quick note, there's some amazing supplements available in other forms such as liquid tinctures and liquid liposomal forms that have really high bioavailability. For me personally, I just don't tend to seek them out because I've had good results with what I'm currently using and I like what I'm currently using. That is all for today. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, please like and subscribe down below to my channel for more related content. I post a new full length video every Monday in YouTube shorts throughout the week. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.